This is the world of the campus vets. This is probably one of my most emotional cases. I was worried that I wouldn't do it perfectly. They said this calf is still alive. I love her to pieces, and I would do virtually anything for her. At the Western College of Veterinary Medicine, students learn a complex range of life-saving skills, skills that are often tested in an urgent race against time. I'm called down, and then I come here and I find that there is this cow having trouble giving birth. This is vet student Donna Wager's first experience with a cow in labor. No textbook could have prepared her for what's about to happen. The cow's owner, Albert Leeson, was unable to deliver the calf at his ranch. Dr. Albert Barth is the supervising veterinarian. Okay. So, Donna, were you going to have a feel on this one? Yeah. But, again, the head's not at, in the canal at all, right? What did you find there, Donna? Well, um, if it's posterior, just the back legs were in the canal. It's bad news. The calf is facing the wrong way. So how long has she been calving then? For how, when um, did you? Not, not sure. Not sure. This cow has been in labor for a little bit, and we're worried about the oxygen supply that the calf has, so we want to get it out as soon as possible. And can you tell me what you think his sight is like? Almost blind. Almost blind. And how long has he had cataracts? A few days into her ophthalmology rotation, student Lana Bissett is faced with a heartbreaking case, a poodle with eye problems. I will do the eye exam, and Zoe will help me out. Hey, sweetheart. Helen Tanita has been deaf for eight years. The bond with her poodle is more than emotional. Merlin is a certified hearing service dog. He's my very best friend. My very best friend, and he is just the most wonderful thing that's ever happened to me. Does Merlin have any other illness? Any illnesses? Any Helen's nieces will ensure their aunt understands the exam. Well, Merlin is her ears. She relies on him so much. It's up to Lana to come up with the initial assessment without the aid of an instructor. And you as the student get to do all the, the initial workup, come to grips with your thoughts, and then have the clinician come in and either say yay or nay. It really gives us a good start to interact with the client. Why don't we uh, just pop him on the floor and see what he does for a maze. Merlin, come. Merlin. Come on, Merlin. Merlin's disoriented behavior points to a lack of sight. On the floor, we drop a, a cotton ball or a gauze to see if they'll follow it. Most dogs, when they have cataracts, are blind as a result of not being able to see through their lens. I'm praying that he will see again. Helen fears she'll have to give up Merlin if his vision can't be saved. In the large animal clinic, the vet students make one last attempt to pull the calf out vaginally. With a chain pulling, you, you give it only so much force, and if there's not even any movement whatsoever, you're not going to be able to pull that calf through the canal. Okay. Is it going to be a C-section? I'm not sure. I'll just look at Dr. Barth here, try and get his eye. Is it for us? It's for yeah. you. <laughs> okay. Dr. Barth hands the case to the surgical team. Students on the surgical rotation step in to perform the cesarean section. Do you want to do it, Kendra? Kendra Kremenuk will be the head student on this case. I was definitely nervous because I've never done one before, and I was worried that I wouldn't do it perfectly. You know, you always want to do your best. The cow will be conscious throughout the entire cesarean section, but Kendra gives her a local anesthetic shot to deaden sensation in the cow's abdomen. The biggest challenge is going to be flipping that calf around. All righty, shall we load her up? If 
they can't get the calf turned around in time, it could suffocate and die. Lana continues to test Merlin's eyes. So that's just another test to see if he's seeing my hand, like as people, if something's coming to your eyes, no, he's not blinking at the moment. Merlin's cataracts seem to be the cause of his blindness, but the problem could be far more serious. I'm gonna put a stain on both of his eyes and that's just to check for any corneal ulcers. Um, we don't wanna do surgery if there is in fact ulcers until they're healed. So now we'll turn down the lights. Um, we'll use a little blue lens and we'll see if there's any stain. That eye looks clear. Yeah, both look like they're clear, don't have any ulcers. Good. In Lana's opinion, the cataracts seem to be the only thing wrong with Merlin's eyes. Most routine cataract cases, uh, we do plan to go to surgery the next day and remove those lenses and do um, a lens implant. Lana raises Helen's hopes, but the ophthalmologist will discern a bigger problem. Um, we'll have Dr. Gron come in and take a look at him as well, just to have him evaluate the dog. We have a 12-year-old dog with bilateral cataracts. Okay. Um, I think they're hyper-mature. They appear wrinkled. Okay. Um, I don't think at this point he is visual. Okay. So what would you do next? What would I do next? If you were an ophthalmologist. <laughs> I would do an ERG. Okay. So we're going to do that. Okay. Now, I have to do a little test called an ERG. So the ERG is critical in terms of establishing, is there retinal activity? Uh, we're going to put some little electrodes underneath the skin. I'm going to flash a very bright light, and that will tell us whether the retina is functioning. The key thing is, is just to make sure that that light flashes directly into this eye, and that these lids are held open. talk to you about right now is the results of this test. So if you don't understand me, you stop me and they'll interpret, okay? He's going to tell you the results. They're not good, okay? okay. Results. Test results. Test are not good. Are not good? They're not good. Vet student Lana Bissett waits for her instructor, Dr. Bruce Gron, to deliver some bad news to Helen, the owner of a hearing service dog named Merlin. This is what your dog produced, and this is what he should have produced. This is normal. That's normal. And that's this is not normal. What that means is his retina is not functioning. It's not good. The retina isn't working, Helen. Something that can be done? No. What you're seeing here is not rare in ophthalmologist offices. Okay. In other words, we get cataracts. First test we do is an ERG, and the reason that's the first test is because there's a high incidence of retinal disease in these dogs with cataracts and there's nothing you could have done to prevent that. It's what caused the cataracts. You need to understand that. This is not your fault. You couldn't have prevented this. Helen's worst fear is realized. She worries she'll have to give up her beloved hearing dog. It's pretty obvious that the dog had the cataracts bilaterally, and um, unfortunately, like, I wasn't able to see the retina through the cataracts. He's going to be blind forever. He's going to be blind all the time. To see her being emotionally distraught over that, it's very hard. You know, you become very involved in these cases. And um, for me, this is probably one of my most emotional cases um, because he's her other sense, and now he's lost a sense as well. So regardless of the fact if we remove those cataracts, he wouldn't be seeing anyway. But there is some good news. It's likely that Merlin has been blind for months, maybe even years and yet he's always remained an excellent hearing service dog for Helen. You can see, he can hear. The combination will be good. He's been my, he's been my ears. Yes. And you're his eyes. 
As a younger person, I just never like to interact with people and to know that I have that ability and that people respond quite well to me, um, it makes me feel good. In the large animal clinic, the cow struggling to give birth is ready for surgery. Each C-section you do can be a challenge and each one can be different. Oh, and in this case, the feet were over on the other side and the right uterine horn. And so you have to actually flip the uterus over in order to get those feet to bring them up to the incision. So uh, that was Kendra's first C-section. She got one of the tougher ones. Kendra is guided by surgical resident, Dr. Aaron Fearheller. Count your layers as you're going through because this is the side that you're going to hit room with without noticing it. So you've just gone through skin. The team must fight the clock in order to save the calf's life. They said this calf is still alive. So I want you to go in and see if you can find the feet. Well, having never done the C-section before or even felt a cow's uterus from that angle, um, just knowing like how much pressure you can actually put on the uterus and you don't want to tear through anything because that's just a bad scenario. Now, can you feel if you lift on this hog moves a bit and push? See, can you feel it moving? Yeah. Keep rocking it. Kendra performs the difficult task of rotating the unborn calf. I did question myself as I first went in there because I was having a lot of trouble lifting the, the calf up to, towards the, the hole. You know, at that point, I was kind of questioning, am I going to be able to do this? So now what you're going to do, you're going to try with both hands to get this whole horn and try and pull that whole thing up. They've got the calf in the right position, but the question remains, is it alive? The surgical team has managed to flip the breached calf over. Its head is now facing them, and most importantly, the calf is still alive. All right, now we need our horse people going there, but not too hard to I'm happy, I feel like I've accomplished something. I you know you have that, that warm feeling in your insides, you know, that uh, like the calf looks good and you know, the cow made it through and we were successful and, and I was a part of that, so I'm very excited. Who bites? You don't bite. Oh my. Across town, Danielle Newman lives with an unusual roommate. Actually, my boyfriend had raised rats before, and he told me that they're excellent pets. They're very sociable, they're very friendly, they're very happy, and they like to cuddle. And so I thought, well, I'll give a rat a try. Rats have amazing personalities. It's like I've had some totally too cool to hang out with you. <laughs> she kind of looks like a cross between piece of raw chicken and Yoda. But when Danielle returned from an overseas trip a few weeks ago, she noticed a big change in CB. These are her bumps. She's got 12 of them all over her skin. I've really noticed her personality's changed a lot since she had her, since her bumps. She's a lot, a lot less cuddly. I think she's sensitive about them. I just want her to be happy again. CV. We are heading off to the veterinary college so CV can have her, uh, her bumps extracted, hopefully. I'm worried that, you know, the treatment will be, will be very expensive, prohibitively so. I love her to pieces and I would do virtually anything for her. At the vet college, Danielle finds a team of students eager to work on this case. Well, her, her heart rate is way too fast to count. 
Um, her lungs sound good, but she's sniffing a lot, and um, she's shivering. She shivers. Diane Crookshank is one of three students working in the exotic pets rotation. Diane has been assigned to CB's case. I've actually never seen a pet rat before. Um, I come from Alberta, and supposedly Alberta is rat-free. Um, she has a, a skin condition, and we want to find out what they are so that they don't get worse. Dr. Denilyn Parker will supervise Diane's work. They're very interesting. So what kind of things would you want to do with her? Things like skin scrapings, um, tape preparations, uh, smear impressions, um, even uh, right down to like a biopsy of the lesions and uh, do the full workup. I think a biopsy would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a relatively simple procedure, but you're probably looking at around $100 plus the office visit. So it's, it's up to you whether, how far you want to go with this. But really, I think the only way to get to the bottom of this is to take one of them off and see what we find. Probably have to make another appointment and sort of do some fundraising. Okay, and yeah, stuff and like that's, that that's fair enough. Get some money for that, but I'll bring her back and... I was excited seeing it, and I'm really glad that this owner is going to let us work this case up and, and do the diagnostics that we need to find out what's going on. While Danielle raises money for the hairless rat's biopsy, a fuzzier patient is demanding attention in the large animal clinic. <laughs> they call him Lambertus. Um, I'm not quite sure where that came from, but <laughs> that's his name. When Lambertus was just a week old, his mother accidentally crushed him, fracturing his hind leg. So we cast him and sent him home, and somehow he got underneath his mama again and she fractured both his front legs. Abandoned by his owner, Lambertus is now a ward of the college. Mama is anyone with a milk bottle. And at the moment, that's Dr. Kelly McClellan, the staff veterinarian watching over the orphan's recovery. What we did is we made him some splints out of small animal cast material. It took him probably about in about a week to 10 days to be able to really move with two splints and a, and a cast on. Um, it's kind of a bit of a pet. He's got it pretty good here because that, uh, um, he gets fed lots of times during the day. We got a sign up that says he's not supposed to get fed extra times, but he's growing quite well because whenever he makes a noise, somebody feeds him. Lunch is over. With no home and no family, it remains to be seen what's in store for Lambertus. Danielle is back with her pet rat. She worked extra shifts at a warehouse to pay for CB's biopsy. Okay, so today what we're going to do is, is our goal is to find out what these uh, masses are on her skin, on CV skin. So we're going to do a biopsy under anesthetic. So, okay. Hello. Hello. Baby. Any change? Um, a little bit of change. This one has opened. Okay. Vet student okay. Diane Crookshank will perform the biopsy. This one seems to be have gotten a little bit larger. Um, so yeah, we're gonna anesthetize her and we're gonna take a few samples and then some of the larger ones will probably open up and see how easy it is to, to take the material out. Mm -hmm. We can take them all off if you want us to. It, it all really depends. Like if you think it would be too much for her to get them all off at once, then I don't want to overwhelm her system or anything like that. Okay. So I guess it's it's up to you if you if you think it's going well, then proceed. Anesthesia gas renders CB unconscious. I'm going to step back and let you guys run with this, okay? Even if you're not done drawing, let's go. I'm done. Okay. The plan is to remove one and send it to the lab to be analyzed. The first one pops out easily. Okay, so it looks like we will be able to empty them out. So cool. Like a big keratin pimple. These masses that have opened up a little bit, there's a buildup of what looks like keratin underneath, and it's, it looks like we can get this material out and maybe make her feel more comfortable. It's likely that they'll just fill up again, but um, in the meantime, she'll, she'll probably be more comfortable. As a precaution, the biopsy will be analyzed. Oh, poor little munchkin. 
Your sweetie. mom is going to want to see you. So yeah, bundle her up, keep her warm. Beautiful job. Yes, you're very cute. She's gonna look a little spotted. Okay. Okay, no, not too bad. Okay. So there's some stitches here and here. Okay. Um hi sweetie, yeah, I know. She's getting so worried. It's been it's been a rather stressful couple of hours. I met my friends for lunch and all I could talk about was my hat was in surgery. And no no problem. Diane did a great job. The biopsy confirms Dr. Parker's assessment. Overactive skin cells produce the benign cysts. CB will just have to live with a less than perfect complexion. She's a great friend. She's, you know, just someone, you know, I can do dishes or I can do my homework with or I can just wander around the house with her on my shoulder. In the summer, I usually, I'll take a, one of my rats to the Fringe Festival. So, local theater festival here was basically a street fair. And they're fine, they'll just sit on my shoulder.